everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Smart Fox TV. And if you like it so much, don't forget to subscribe. Hi, how are you? How are you feeling today? A lot is going on with the new school year living in another year with things still not quite back to normal. Life will always have obstacles, which is not always bad, since obstacles do teach you lessons about the world, the people around you, and you. Today, I want to take a moment and talk about the importance of taking care of you. You are going to be with yourself a long time, so why would you neglect the one person who will be with you through all of the ups and downs? Sometimes we neglect taking care of ourselves. And we often will say, well, I love myself and I do take care of myself. But you might also be too hard on yourself. Give yourself grace to grow and not be perfect. So I want to ask you another question. What is your favorite way to take care of your mental health? Listening to music, exercising, meditation, talking with friends or family, journaling, maybe spending time with your furry friend or something else that's meaningful to you. Recently, mental health has become an open topic during the Olympic Games. For decades, the athletes were told to just shake it off or toughen up, to set aside the doubt and focus on the task at hand. Winning, dominating, getting it done. For years, Simone Biles was one of the very best at that. Suddenly, to some, shockingly, she decided she wasn't in the right headspace by pulling on her white sweatsuit in the middle of an Olympic gymnastics meet and by doing it with a gold medal hanging in the balance. Biles might very well have redefined the mental health discussion that's been coursing through the sports for the past year. Michael Phelps, winner of a record 23 gold medals and now retired, has long been open about his own mental health struggles. Phelps has said he contemplated suicide after the 2012 Olympics while wrapped with depression. Now, an analyst for NBC Swimming Coverage, he said watching Biles struggle broke my heart. Mental health over the last 18 months is something people are talking about, Phelps said. We're human beings. Nobody is perfect. So yes, it is okay not to be okay. Biles joins some other high profile athletes in the Olympic space, overwhelmingly females who have been talking openly about a topic that had been taboo in sports for seemingly forever. Tennis player Naomi Osaka withdrew from the French Open, never went to Wimbledon, and after her early exit in Tokyo, conceded that the Olympics was a bit too much to handle. Dutch cyclist Tom de Molen left training camp in January to clear his head. Liz Cambridge, a WNBA player who competes for Australia, pulled out of the Olympics a week before they opened because of anxiety over entering a controlled COVID bubble in Tokyo that would have kept her friends and family away. I also took things to a new level, one that now makes it thinkable to do what had been almost unthinkable only 24 hours before she did. She stepped back, assessed the situation, realized it would not be healthy to keep going out of the all-around competition to focus on her mental well-being. I have to do what's right for me and focus on my mental health and not jeopardize my health and well-being, said a tearful Biles. So that should go for you too. Take care of yourself and make sure you are doing the necessary things for your physical and mental health. That's all for this segment on taking care of you, the most important person. Hey everyone, Kim here, and thanks for joining me for some dad jokes. So first we got, what did the ocean say to the beach? Nothing, it just waved. <laughs> Next we have, what did the zero say to the eight? That belt looks good on you. This is Kim, and thanks for joining me for some dad jokes. I hope you had a good laugh. Hello, Smart Fox viewers. I hope today finds you well. I know that good news always cheers me up, so here's some good news to start your day. 
We know that the pandemic has changed a lot of ways that we interact or don't interact with people. Some might say that's why TikTok or Zoom have really exploded in usage after the pandemic. But for two-year-old Benjamin Olsen, he spent more than half of his life seeing only his family and next-door neighbor, who has also become his close friend. The interesting part is the huge age gap between them, as his neighbor Mary is 99 years old and turning 100 years old this December. At first, Mary would wave to little Benjamin through her window, but later, the two started chatting and meeting up at the fence between their yards. Now, they may meet up to blow bubbles or play a game of cane ball, which is when Benjamin would kick the ball to Mary and she'd hit it back using her cane. Mary says that Benjamin warms her heart as he'll find different things to give her like rocks or dirt. She, in turn, even gifted him a basket of her son's old trucks, which he is now using to learn his colors. Benjamin considers Mary his best friend and his very first friend, and his mom Sarah shared that Benjamin misses Mary a lot on rainy and cold days when they can't meet. In an interview with NBC News, Mary also revealed that she misses Benjamin a lot too on such days. It's always sweet to see that you're never too young or too old to make new friends, and no pandemic should get in the way of friendships. If you thought about someone as you were listening to this story today, go ahead and reach out to them because who knows, maybe they miss you too. This is Kim. This is Tracy. Hi, this is Sally. And thanks for watching Smartbox TV. Stay, Stay boxy! boxy.